Hello, everyone. Welcome to Resonet. So I'm really excited. Look at this adorable mold. So I'm so excited to use this. I have some ideas for it. And it's just kind of a vintage TV. And you know, I love the vintage things like this anyway. So I'm super excited to give this a try. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started. It looks like it comes with two different keychains. And then this larger size TV here comes with a stand. Okay, so I'm just super excited. I think this is going to be really fun. I do have an idea for this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start with painting some of these raised pieces here with some silver. You're like this silver. This is just a Treehouse Studios paint marker in silver. Okay, it is ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around my raised edges here and go ahead and get this done. This has got kind of a messy tip, as you can see here. I prefer using the ones that are, oh gosh, that are, you know, new. Little paper towel here with some um, alcohol handy so I can wipe up anything that I make a mess with like I did right there. And I'm going to keep going. Now what might be easier is my gel cushion pins on these. So I might actually go get them and do the rest of this outline with the gel pins. I mean, with the cushion pins. Okay, I found one in um, silver. This one's called Shiny Titanium. And I have been, <laughs> since I have found these pins, I'll tell you, I've been using them on all different things and I have been ordering a couple of different kinds just to kind of try them all out. There we go. There we go. Okay, so this is what we've got for right now. Can you see? Is it showing up okay? You see the, the silver edges? I don't see too much problem with going over. I got a little, little bit of sparkle flying here and there. This is going to be black. This part here will be black and then the rim needs to be a color that I need to like probably put in with a paintbrush. I'm going to actually try this. This is my, um, I've never tried this before. This is called um, Calypso Opal and this came from Glitter and Crafts for You, which is where I buy all my super chameleon mica powders from them. And I think that that's what we will do for around our edge. It's not very much in here, just a little bit, but I think it'll go a long ways if I'm careful.
Okay, this is what we got so far. That was kind of the most time consuming part of it. See, I think it's going to be just fine. Now, if we do the black, that's going to darken up all of these colors a bit. And that Calypso opal, I'm pretty sure is just kind of like an inner, in a kind of like an interference, almost like an interference blue is what I'm thinking, because I see a lot of like blue to it. See some parts here I missed. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make up some resin and I will be back here in just a minute. See you then. Okay, everybody. So I've got my um, J Diction made up here and I am ready to go ahead and just pour clear resin. I'm just going to do the insides of my TV screens. Okay. So first of all, I want to look and make sure that they look pretty clean and they do look pretty clean, but I'm going to take a paper towel and a little bit of alcohol and go over it really quickly anyway. Okay, just put a bit here on the edge of my paper towel. It's gonna go around here once. Okay, and again in here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just pour a little bit in here, my J Diction, a little bit in here. Ooh, but that one, that one came out a little quick. Need more than this. All right, go ahead and help it around to the edges here. don't see any bubbles in there I do see a little piece of lint or something right there maybe you need a little bit more on this side maybe even a little more on this side So I'm going pretty much to the top of the inside of these molds without going over. Okay, so now I'm going to take my alcohol, give it a quick misting spray from up here. I'm going to go ahead and let this cure. I'm going to watch it for bubbles. Um, and then we will come back and do our next part. Got it on my cutting board here. So it's going to make it easier to move over to my curing, um, to my curing rack. And when it's done, we'll be back to do the next step. All right, I'll see you then. Okay, so our TV screen, sorry, that's kind of loud, is completely cured. Can you see? I, I did notice I've got a little bit of like really fine glitter in some of the screens here that, and a little bit of lint actually, which I was kind of surprised, um, that came in sometime during the curing process. But I'm hoping that it's not going to make a real big difference with our end result. So I've made up some J Diction and I've got four ounces here in this little cutoff water bottle. I think our TV for this TV, I think I'm going to just do it in black. So I'm going to use this India ink, put a few drops in, get this mixed up really well. This is Handy Art India ink. It's a true ink stains if you get it on anything so be really careful if you work with the inks um, I really like them actually I think they do a great job coloring that is a nice opaque black so I'm gonna leave it at that so now what I want to do is this is really kind of not very tall. The edging around 
the edging around all of this, there's a little lip, okay? Not very deep at all that goes around the screen, around each of the channel um, knobs, and around this little design down here on the bottom. See, so got a little bit of blue down here. So I'm going to scrape that off real quick. A little extra blue. I know that's going to show up. Not that big of a deal, but there we go. I think I got most of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray just a bit of alcohol in there. I really don't anticipate having any problem with bubbles or anything. But I need to pour this really carefully. And I, because I don't want to get it into the inside of my channels. I'm not sure what I want to do with those yet. So I'm just going to pour really carefully around this and try to keep it from going over the edges. And go in between these is fine. But I don't want it going around inside the channel. I might go ahead and fill this part in here. I think if I do that, it's just going to be kind of a blue. When we demold it, it's going to just come out kind of a blue color. I'm going to go ahead and do the antenna. We have the silver, a really pretty silver pin. Oh no, I think I'm I'm risking going over here. I see it kind of domey. I really don't want that to happen, so I'm gonna let it run down this way. Oh no! <laughs> well that kind of backfired. That part kind of backfired on me. I wasn't paying it close enough attention. It's okay. Probably would have been easier just to do this first one all one color anyway, but just kind of wanted to see if I could get it to. Hmm. So I think what I might do is go ahead and just. I guess I'll go ahead and just do this rim. It'll just match this down here. I kind of wanted it kind of a white, but that's okay. I definitely don't want this to go over the screen. Okay, I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to help it around the edge. There we go. around the edge so I don't get any bubbles around there okay gosh okay so there is that part oh my little channel knobs are being are gonna go ahead and I can see that they're already starting to fill in so I might just kind of do a little bit of a thing in here real quick and then just let the black go over it's going to anyway As careful as I was trying to be, it just is going to not work that way. Okay, don't want too much in there because I don't want it to spill over into my screen. All right, so let me see. I'm going to try to make this a little easier doing this part. Got alcohol on the screen. You know, another thing that we need to make... I almost forgot about is our base. Go ahead and pour this in here. Okay, so that took four ounces. This is not full yet, and I don't want it to be 
Um, I don't want it to be quite full yet until I put in my thing that I'm doing for my screen down here. Okay, so I'm going to just let that set for a second. And I'm going to move my little stand over here to the curing rack. And then I'm going to find some things for these two screens. And I'll be back in just a minute. And I did find a couple of stickers. These are Stickability brand. And I feel like that I'll just use one of these. It'd be a great size to stick in that screen. And this is back when you could be, get a sheet of stickers like this for $2.99 here in the U.S. I think those days are probably gone. Yeah, I always pick up vinyl stickers and things when I am always watching for them to come on sale. So here they are. You know what? I think I'm going to just do this one here. This one that says fresh bread on it. I'm going to try that one. And I'm going to use a bit of UV resin. I'm going to try a couple of different methods here for my stickers. I'm going to use a bit of UV resin on this screen. And go ahead and spread it out. Make sure my stick is clean. Okay, that looks pretty good. Fresh bread sticker here. I'll lay it here in the center. Okay, and I'm going to use my flashlight here to kind of get it to start curing. About two minutes with my flashlight and it feels pretty cured. All the way through. Okay, so that's pretty good. So now this one is ready to pour, but I want to do my little TV antenna. And you can probably just pour one of these one whole color and not worry about any of this if you don't want to. But I kind of want these to be, you know, they're kind of fun. They're, there's a lot of detail to them. So I would like to, you know, take advantage of a little bit of that. Okay, now it just kind of depends on what color that I want the little TV to be. I kind of would like to do something other than black. All right, I'm going to try something. I'm going to put just a little bit of this white mica powder. It's kind of that blue, interference blue. I'm going to try to make my TV screen and the backing of this. this Hopefully this isn't a mistake to do it this way. I'm going to see if I can kind of protect the back of this little sticker without having to do a separate pour over it. I realized that I could color some UV resin and do it that way, but I'm trying to do cut corners and do it kind of a quicker cheating way. We'll see what we get with that. Is one ounce going to be enough? Gosh, I might need another half an ounce or so in there, I feel like. Okay, so now this TV, I decided I'm going to do with a red, a bright red, and I'm going to be using this eye candy in Kaku Red. I haven't used this before. This is a pigment paste. But this is a really pretty vibrant red. Just put a bit here on my stick to color this. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll pour this. Good luck. I hope it turns out. This is a nice bright red. I don't know what it's going to do to my TV screen. It might be too red. those into that part. I 
up into my antenna and around those edges. Okay, I'm going to try something different with this last mold. I'm going to go ahead and just pour it clear. And then I'm going to try something with this one at the end when it's already cured. All right, well, anyway, when this part is all cured, I will be back and we'll do the next step. We'll unmold this one and we'll do the next step on this one. Okay? All right, I will see you guys all then. And this is cured. This is completely cured. I've got eight ounces of J-Diction made up in here. And I'm thinking before I keep going, I almost think I want to take this one out just because... Well, do I? Mm, I don't know. Maybe not. But what I'm going to do is I found these little stickers I, that I bought on Chimu. These just little um, cute, almost kind of kawaii style stickers. These are vinyl stickers. And I was looking and I thought, oh gosh, that would just about fit just right right here. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'm just going to put some UV resin in here. And just use my flashlight and just cover the screen. Okay, I'm going to flip this up just a bit, do it from the back side. Alexa. Set the timer for 90 seconds. Timer for how long? 90 seconds. One minute and 30 seconds. Starting now. Okay, let me see what that looks like on the other side real quick. Make sure it's in there even. Looks like it might be. Okay, so now on this TV screen, what I decided to do is I printed out a little thing for my channel. This is the beginning part of my um, channel, which you guys probably all recognize, those of you who watch. And um, so I decided this would be kind of fun to have in my resin studio because you know this little TV does have a stand that we've already poured in black. So we will be able to unmold it. And I thought, how fun would this be to have sitting in here somewhere? And so I just kind of, I, what I did is I printed this out just on a normal kind of a cheap printer, okay? And then I took a, um, a, a label sticker like ones that you would print out if you ever sold anything on eBay or Etsy, a self-print label. And I peeled it and stuck this normal paper, uh, just normal computer paper onto the sticky side of the label just to kind of give it some thickness. And then I sprayed a couple coats of Mod Podge spray sealant over the top. Okay, so that's what I just did for that. And then I just kind of estimated the size and this is going to work just about right got a little bit of black back here because I stuck it on a piece of black and um, just kind of bled through but I don't think it's going to matter coming through here. Let me pour this into a couple of cups because it's definitely starting to get kind of warm. And kind of separate this out a little bit. If you pour it into smaller containers where it's not quite as thick, you can slow it down from curing too quickly if you can catch it in time. Okay, so hopefully that will cool, cool that down a little. And um, I'm going to do just a tiny bit, I think, for this one and some kind of a color. Maybe this color. It's kind of a vintage green color. Just a little bit, about this much. No. About that much, I guess. Go ahead and stir this. 
here is our color and I'm just going to go ahead and pour it and I'm hoping it's not going to go underneath my sticker. I, I feel like I got it completely cured that way, but we'll see what happens. Do I have any room up here? A little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so that's going to have to be good on that one because that is full. Well, you know what? I think because my resin's getting warm, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and just pour it this way. And I'm doing this whole thing clear because I've already got my color with the black. I don't have any bubbles in this J Diction. I'm going to be kind of careful here. I don't want to get too full because I've got to put this in. Okay, I'm going to give it a quick spray. Just a really fine mist up here. I'll cover that green one too. There we go. And wish me luck, you guys. I can't really see what I'm doing, so I'm just going to have to kind of wing it. I'm going to go through this way. And put it all in. I don't want any bubbles in there. I hope that that's pretty good. Now, I don't want to go over, but I need to get this covered. I really hope I've got that lined up right. Gosh, it's hard to know. I can't really tilt it up now to see. Well, let's see, as this gets wet, I can kind of see through it. So let's see, I think the lines are a little bit better. Left in this, left in this one. This is really full. Okay, oddly enough, I don't think this is going to be moving around too much. I have to scoot it over every once in a while that way. So, I'll give it a spray. Oops, just sprayed inside my mica powder. All right, so I'm going to watch this. I'm going to keep scooting it back. This is what I wanted to avoid, and that's why I wanted to just use the UV resin on my screen. But I was worried about my, um, I was worried about my resin getting too hot. So I'm just going to go ahead and have to watch it, okay? But um, in the meantime, I will just be back when this is cured, and I'm excited to take these out. Gosh, I think they're going to be really cute, and uh it'll be fun to make some keychains out of these so all right you guys i will see you when this part's done i'll see you then hello everyone i'm back this is completely cured i'm excited to get these out of here so let's start with this red one here and get this out and see how it did this was kind of just a really simple and quick one and so i'm not real sure how that's going to turn out but let's give it a look Oh gosh. Okay, so I see that this kind of did turn out kind of that um, interference blue, purpley color that I thought. And 
it's cute, but it definitely needs something. So I'm going to have to probably take my chrome pin and come in and help this one a little bit. But our sticker worked great. The UV resin did a great job. There's no issues or problems with any of that. The shape turned out good. A couple little micro bubbles here, but not, not much. All right. So anyway, for just a quick one, that one is super cute. And we'll go ahead and take this one out. Okay, so we'll turn this one over and see how this one did. Oh gosh, okay, so that's, that turned out really cute. Kind of a cute little kawaii, um, maybe early teen. This would be cute on a little backpack or something. Uh, the sticker turned out really well. Just really super crystal clear. Let's see. The TV color is pretty, really kind of a pretty vintage color. The silver that we did through here, you can see, um, didn't really show up too much. So we'll go in and we'll fix that. But the edging around that turned out great. Couple, again, couple little micro bubbles around. I'm not too worried about it though. I think it's really cute. Okay, so now let's take this one out. And I'll have to figure out what I did with my stand. Let's see. Here is the stand. This is nice and really well cured because this was done several days ago. So we'll go ahead and take this out. And here it is. We'll set it down there. No issues with this. Didn't really expect any problems with this. So yeah, go ahead and get this big TV screen out. I noticed I got a phone call from my son who lives out of state and they've got my little grandson who's almost eight months old and anyway so when they call of course I answer because you know they're busy and I don't get to talk to them that often and so I got a little sidetracked with coming in and making sure that this stayed centered and as you can see here it went a little bit off side, you see, right here. And it kind of pushed over to this side a little bit. But I'm hoping that it didn't really affect it too much in the long run. So let's turn it over and see. Here it goes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. That is really cute. I'm actually super happy with that. I'm going to come in and, and touch up the silver. And... Um, but I think that is really cute. Let's see how it fits on the stand. Let's see, does it go in there? How does that go? Oh, there we go. Huh. Shoot, well, that actually doesn't really fit in there very well. I wonder why that is. Huh. I went as deep as it was supposed to go, so I'm going to have to do something with this to figure that out. Oh, actually, you know what I'm supposed to do? I bet I'm supposed to glue this in. Okay, I will probably just take some, uh, some UV resin and go all around the back and see if that's enough. If it's enough, I won't have to do the front as well. But, um, but if that's glued on there, this is going to stand up just really great. And what, this will be really cute to put on my desk right so cute the cover of it nice it looks like glass it's really clear the um the paper that we did and sprayed with the mod podge did fine it looks like it's pretty well centered and yeah i'm happy with this okay so let me find my silver my my small silver pin and go around this i do see how i have a little bit of overage here of my um i used that pin that that cushion pin to go around the edges and it was a real it was really pretty but it was a really fine silvery color through here well it kind of i didn't realize that it was getting out into my mold as much as it was because it didn't really show but you can maybe see here that it did go out around the edges if i would have used a lighter color this probably wouldn't have been a problem but, um, but it's, it's still okay. I still think it turned out 
really kind of fun. So I'm going to get my silver pin though and we're going to touch this stuff up and I'll be back here in just a second. Okay, so here is kind of a small collection of some of the silver pins I have. Um, this one is a Krylon. These are two of my Molotow pins, which I love. Here's just a regular um, Bic fine tip permanent marker what I might that I might need to get into these little areas. And then this is a Deco Color uh, premium silver. So anyway, I'm thinking about the between all of these that I should be fine. So I'm going to start with my Molotow marker, my paint marker here. And I'm sure it's going well. And I'm going to go ahead and go over my antenna here with this one. This is a really, really nice chrome finish on these. But you can see that it's already got kind of a, it's not dr quite dry yet, but I don't know if you can see the kind of the shine on that chrome. This, the Molotow does a really great job. Okay, I'll put a link to those. I think you can get those now on Amazon, and I'll try to remember to put a link for that. And then for my, my little, let's see, that's skinny enough to go down in there. It might not be. So I might have to just leave this silver alone. It actually looks pretty good. The stuff that we did way down deep inside of there. Um, but my little channel selectors here, I think they need a little help. let that dry and then I'm probably going to go over it with some chrome. Okay I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of touch up on this one as well. I might actually do just a little bit of black. I just use this little permanent black marker and fill in my channel channel things here a bit. Here it is. I'm sorry about all the light glare. I don't know if I can get rid of that or not. But um, here it is. So this is definitely a little on the sloppy side for me. I'm not real thrilled with the fact that I've got the glitter in the black. In fact, I think what I might do is just pour the clear in the TV screen here and then do a solid color for my rest of my TV. And then I'm not even gonna bother coming in and doing this trim on the inside of the mold. I think I'll wait till I demold it and just choose the color I want like I did here and with these and um, just kind of go from there. But actually, I think this turned out really cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my UV resin ready and I'm gonna glue this to the stand. And then when it's all done, I will come back and show you the final result. Okay, you guys. So if you know me very well, you'll know that I probably did not just leave this project alone. <laughs> so I started getting an idea of what would happen if I went ahead and lit the back of this and made it into a backlit screen. So I took this tray from a cookie package that I had that I keep that kind of thing every once in a while. 
and it just happened to be the perfect size to go behind the TV. And so I put some little lights. These are just the battery operated little fairy lights that you can buy pretty inexpensively on Amazon or Timu or, you know, wherever your favorite place is to shop for that stuff. This particular one I got on Timu and I'm pretty sure I bought it in a big set. And I've got the um, picture of the back of it that has the item number that I will show you here. Hang on. So here this is. Hopefully it is clear enough for you to read the item number if you want the particular one that I used. But these are pretty readily available pretty much everywhere. You can see that I took the little fairy lights and I kind of unraveled them. And I used a combination of just tape and some UV resin to kind of secure them, you know, just kind of around. It wasn't anything too fancy. I didn't put a whole lot of thought or work into it. I just wanted it lit at the very back because if I had the lights right up behind it, you could see the individual lights poking you through or not poking through, but you know, you could see the light bulbs and I didn't want that. I wanted like a soft glow behind it. Okay, so here's the back and you can see that I did use the UV resin from the back side to get it to stand up and that was pretty easy, no problems there. And you can't see the, um, the resin from the front side, but um, that's what it looks like from the back. And so what I did is I turned on the lights just to kind of see what it would look like. And then I kind of lined it up. It was just super easy to do because it just fit perfectly back there. Um, but then I just used tape to secure it. And that's if I need to change the lights out at some point if they stop working. Here it is, just secured kind of easily to the back. A couple of pieces of packing tape I just did on the side so it would peel off kind of easily. Now I just took a little piece of um, tape and I rolled it, a piece of packing tape and rolled it into a circle and just kind of like double-sided tape and placed the little battery pack underneath that behind it there on the stand with the on off switch easily accessible. Here's just a quick look at the way it fits on the back. That white cookie container looks like it's really huge, but it's really not. It's maybe inch and a half, two inches deep or so. So it just uh, fit on there pretty well. Here it is in my resin studio with all the lights turned off and you can see what a great soft glow just comes right through that screen. You could really be creative with this. I can imagine all kinds of birthday or anniversary or gosh, holidays. There's so many different possibilities. Um, I, my mind's already just spinning with the next one I wanna try. I hope you guys had fun with this project. I hope it encourages you to think outside of the box, create something different, create something new. Don't be afraid to try something. They don't always turn out great, <laughs> but it's always fun to um, just to give something a try. I appreciate you all. Thank you again for joining me. And I will see you all next time.